All right, it's nine o'clock. Let's go ahead and try that little patch of sun. That's the only sun making its way really through the trees. Let's see if we can make use of that. All right, it's 12 o'clock. The sun is directly overhead. Let's see if we can get this to lay back enough. Yeah, that should do it. Always wear your shades when doing solar experiments. Sorry about that air conditioner. This time of the year, you're just gonna have to put up with it. Now, the challenge with the sun being directly overhead is I can't see the focal point on the bottom. So I gotta kinda judge. If I do it right, this will burst into flames on its own. So let's just see. This is one experiment. I wanna do another experiment with this jar and some punk wood. But let's see if we can get this ignited first. And we have to do all this before the phone overheats and cuts off. There we go. Pretty easy. Really intense sun at 12 o'clock. All right. Now, what I was wondering is can you take a piece of punk wood, put it down in a jar, and ignite it through the bottom of the jar? You would think that the focal point will be diffused by having to go through that glass. Then, is there going to be enough oxygen inside of this jar to maintain the ember until I can open it up and take it back out? Now, there's really no reason to do this, but I'm just curious about it. And if you really want to stretch, stretch for a reason to do this, there are those times when you've seen the sun out, but it was raining, you know, but that's, that's so rare. Let's see if it, if it maintained the ember. Oh yeah, it's still going. Good. And then that'll ignite the, another piece of newspaper. That's kind of interesting. Another couple hours, well, I think it's about 12.30 right now. 
another two and a half hours or so, we'll try some three o'clock sun, which that's in three o'clock sun is intense sun also. So, all right, it's about uh, 2.45 in the afternoon. And I was going to make up a big tulip poplar bark tinder bundle, but I think it's unnecessary. We'll just get some of this, just a small amount of this. And roll it up in our hands. That should be should be all we need to get a fire started. mirror in there, the concave mirror, will collect up all the photons, direct them to the center, but then project them out to a tight focal point. And you can really ignite a lot of stuff very easily. In low sun, high sun, even when the sky is a little bit misty and cloudy. Well, I've let the sun get away from me. It's coming up on six o'clock and, and there, there's still plenty of sun but everything in my yard is shaded out, except for the rooftop. Even in the backyard, everything is shaded out. Now I could go over to my neighbor's yard over there and use his son, but they already look at me as funny enough, so I better not, I better not scare them any more than what I have. Let's see if I can use the last slivers of light I was wondering for a while there, the shadows of leaves and branches kept getting in the way of the sunlight. Well good, we haven't used any leaves today, let's try some of those. So once again I want to encourage you, you've probably, your wife probably already has one of these makeup mirrors. It's two sided, one power by seven power. and. Uh, It's probably the most powerful solar collector in your house that you never knew that you had. So you ought to get it out, get you some sunglasses out, and experiment with it.
right, y'all. Thanks for joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.